Joining me now from the other side of the aisle, and really a neighboring state, Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania. Senator Toomey, nice to see you. Good morning, Chuck. Good to see you. Uh, I primarily want to talk about USMCA and China trade, but let me ask you a question about uh, the length of the trial, the process of the trial, number one. Appropriate for uh, Senate... Uh, Senator Mitch McConnell to be working with the president's lawyers on how this trial should go? I think it's appropriate to make sure that the president gets a fair trial here. Okay. And uh, I think that's the idea. I think it would be extremely inappropriate to put a bullet in this thing immediately when it comes over. I think we ought to hear what the House uh, impeachment managers have to say, give the president's attorneys an opportunity to make the defense, and then make a decision about whether and to what extent it would go forward from there. You comfortable with no witnesses? <clears throat> Um, I'm not comfortable making that decision right now, uh, but it might come to that, Chuck. You know, there might be a lot of agreement on facts in the case that could be stipulated. I think there's a big disagreement about what rises to a level of impeachment. So after the arguments are made, then I think that's the time to decide whether witnesses are necessary. You're a veteran of this town. Both chambers you've served in. It was remarkable to me that somehow in a, in a week of impeachment, we got, a, we got an agreement on funding. Right. We've got this trade agreement, which, again, I know you're not in favor of. Right. What do you make of the fact that all of a sudden Congress was functional for a week? Uh, what I make of, the, of that is that there's a, a pretty good handful, something on the order of 30 House Democrats that represent districts that Donald Trump carried in 2016 and is very likely to carry again. Mm -hmm. And for them to go home to their electorate and say, the one thing I did was imp impeach the president you like, was probably not a politically sustainable thing, and so I think that put pressure on Speaker Pelosi to uh, eventually uh, come to terms. Uh, you may, you may be the lone vote on the Republican side against new NAFTA USMCA. Um, you don't like it at all. You feel as if you've called it. You believe it's a step backwards right. in trade. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah. So let's start with what NAFTA is. NAFTA is a free trade agreement. Uh, it is zero tariffs on You speak about it in present tense. By the well, way. because it's binding and it is in force right now. We enacted it through legislation, and so it is the law of the land. And it's a free and fair trade agreement. It's completely reciprocal. There are zero tariffs on manufactured goods, zero tariffs on almost all agricultural goods. So you have this free and fair reciprocal agreement, which, by the way, resulted in a 500% increase in American exports to Mexico, Pennsylvania exports. And... Somehow this was unacceptable to the administration, and I think we should ask the question, why? The reason is because we were importing even more from Mexico than we sell to them. We had a trade deficit. We have a trade deficit with Mexico. And the purpose of renegotiating NAFTA was to diminish trade with Mexico so as to diminish the deficit. That's the wrong direction to go on trade. And if you look you at You think trade deficits are bad or good? Uh, trade deficits uh, almost always don't matter. So in the case of Mexico... This president is obsessed with them. I think the president's mistaken on this. I've had this conversation with the president. But stop it. Uh, look at the big picture, Chuck. Mm -hmm. We've had trade deficits with the rest of the world for over 40 consecutive years. And what country has the biggest economy, the highest standard of living, the strongest growth, and the best prospects going forward? We do. And that's because trade deficits don't matter. That money gets reinvested back in the United States. So unfortunately... USMCA is an exercise through all kinds of new provisions to diminish trade, and that's why I hope Republicans will reconsider this. We've historically recognized that we're all better off with more open markets. The big criticism of NAFTA, though, and I experienced it multiple times on the campaign trail myself, even if you would make the argument that you're making now that overall it was a net positive for this right. economy, overall you saw um, some sectors of this economy do well, you know there are spots in Pennsylvania and in Ohio and yeah. in Michigan where they didn't feel it. So the argument is, well, why don't you make the next NAFTA at least protect those communities better? Do you think this will do Well, that? this doesn't protect any particular community except the auto sector. That's, that's what it does. It erects barriers. And, and here's the part that's missing from that analysis, Chuck. It's absolutely true that there are some people that their, their work was displaced, and that's, that's enormously problematic. But the same is true of technology. The same is true of automation. When Microsoft came up with a word processor, everyone who was in the typewriter business lost their job. Right. We could have forbidden word processors and still be using typewriters. We don't do that. Instead, we say, okay, how do we help the folks who used to make typewriters well, learn is, to is compete it true in the new economy? So is that what we've failed at doing? I mean, because I'll be honest, politicians always make that promise. We're going to so, retrain and all this stuff. And I think a lot of people say, <laughs> 
it, it's hard. Stuff's never really happened. It, well, except that what is the unemployment rate today, Chuck? It's at an all-time record low. This is the best economy we've had stagnant. in 50 years. And if it weren't for the modest recession in the manufacturing sector, which is caused by the, the trade wars, <laughs> we'd be in better shape. And no, I disagree. Wages no. are not static. Wages have been accelerating, and the growth has been fastest among the lowest income workers because our economy has been so strong despite the trade uh, tensions. What is this, what do you make of the fact, look, I first met you before you were in Congress, you were for an organization called Glove for Growth, which doesn't have the same stance on trade as it once did when you were there, but. Well, I hope it does. Well, they seem to have a little more of a, of a, of a different stance than you had on some of these things. The Republican Party is not the party of free trade anymore, is it? Uh, let's, let's not come to that conclusion yet. I think if Donald you, Trump's if, Republican Party is not the party uh, of free trade anymore. President Trump is a skeptic about trade. I think that is okay. true. But if you ask my colleagues, most of them would say they're free traders. Um, you know, a trade agreement's a complicated thing, and there are other dynamics that are going on, obviously, in American politics, which might inform someone's judgment. But my view is it's really important that we preserve a commitment to free trade. Were you surprised? Because <clears throat> um, you made the point that Nancy Pelosi needed, her, her moderate members needed this USMCA. Yeah. Um, every Republican senator who's uh, publicly talked about this feels as if Pelosi ate the administration's lunch. Uh, in including the Pelosi, I think your Senator Cornyn said that, I think you thought that. Why do you think the administration thought Pelosi had more leverage than they did? I don't have an explanation for that, Chuck, but in the end, there's no question. It's a complete capitulation to Pelosi is and, by extension, just, Trumpka. Is it possible he just agrees more with Trumpka and Pelosi? Uh, <laughs> look, I, I, if you look at these provisions, um, I, I don't think that's entirely the case with respect to the um, intellectual property uh, protection for biologics, a new category of medicine that went to zero. So there's none now because at the insistence of Nancy Pelosi. The labor provisions where American taxpayers are now going to be enforcing Mexican labor law in a way right. that increases the likelihood of future tariffs. It's, it's very unfortunate from my point of view. Um, would you understand if, if many people read these, this China supposed trade deal and say, huh? Because they're a little bit confused. First, we're, we have tariffs. Then they're back down. We still have some. Some are cut in half. It, it is very confusing and it looks like we're Back to square one. Well, it is confusing because there are a lot of moving parts, but actually I think there's some good news here, and the okay. devil's in the detail and, and adherence to this, but um, China is a problem. I put China in a very different category than Mexico, for instance, for a variety of reasons. It certainly looks like we've got a truce, so right. that means the trade war and the, the, the taxes that we've been imposing on American consumers, at least that doesn't get worse in the short run. And there's been some level of commitment from China to address some of the real problems, like the theft of intellectual property and, yeah. of course, technology transfer. So, like, again, let's but see how this gets like codified. it seems like we squeeze them to just do what they did before, which is buy some ag product. Um, well, there's, <laughs> so there, we apparently get? there's a commitment to ag products, but yeah. there's apparently also a commitment to these other behavioral things, Chuck. Um, like I said before, intellectual property and, mm -hmm. and course, technology transfers and opening up their markets to financial services, for instance. A again, I think the, the question is, will they comply with us? Very quickly, your political future, I saw some speculation you're thinking about that while you may not run for the U.S. Senate again, you might run for governor in 2022. And, and, and I may run for U.S. Senate again. Oh, I have not made you've not ruled out anything. I have not, absolutely not. I thought you were a term out. limit guy. I thought you were um, I have not imposed term limits on myself in the Senate. Okay, well there it is, All right. 2022, don't assume anything. Correct. Republican uh, Senator Pat Toomey, thanks for coming in and sharing your views. Good thanks for you. having me, Chuck.